committee. So some members will be attending this morning's meeting via video conference and our, our witnesses will be briefing via video conference also. So this meeting will be broadcast live and um, we'll, a recording will be made available on the Assembly's website. So just to remind members to mute their um, tablet devices when they're not speaking. Um, and we'll move straight into our first briefing, which is oh sorry, we need our, you, our only briefing um, this morning, which um, there is a clerk's memo for at page 15 of your pack. Um, if members remember, we received a briefing from from Queens um, a couple of weeks ago on the outworkings of the trade and cooperation agreement and its interaction with the protocol and this briefing and the questions that it raised are reflected in the clerk's memo. There is a slide deck at page 19 of your packs and just to remind members that we have quite limited time this morning um, as the officials need to leave at 10. So um, I'd just like to welcome to the meeting um, Shane Murphy who from the EU Exit Preparation and Transition Group, Ryan Hill and Julia Niho Kinchi. Um, so if I hand over to yourself, I think Shane, um, and uh, just if you want to make a brief presentation and then we'll open it up to members for questions. Uh, thank you. Uh, just to confirm, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Great, thank you. Um, again, given time, I'll, I'll endeavour to be brief and I'll not go through um, the slide deck uh, slide by slide, um, but I will touch on a few of the topics in it. Um, well, we we were last here around about November, and um, I think a, a lot has happened in between. Um, well, a lot has happened in the last week or so, um, but um, including what's happened in between, uh, obviously the the agreement on Christmas Eve, uh, the trade and cooperation agreement, the TCA, alongside um, that and the uh, protocol, life under the protocol uh, commencing. Um, at, at, at around the turn of the year. So uh, on those uh, developments, I'll, I'll touch first on the, on the TCA, the Trade and Cooperation Agreement. Um, very basic point to bear in mind is that this is in many respects a Canada style deal. So on trade and goods, it offers the ability to largely handle the subject of tariffs, but it does much less on the non-tariff front and uh, for businesses used to trading with the EU, moving from a trade on a customs union and single market basis to a Canada style arrangement was always going to mean some very big changes for them around form filling checks and complexity, which in turn has consequences for cost and competitiveness. Um, the TCA, it, it came with a sort of strap line or headline, zero tariffs and zero, zero quotas. Um, that strap line probably left out the word but. That's because there are conditions to be met around rules of origin for those zero tariffs to actually be a reality. And those are those are big changes for GB exporters and importers. And you'll have seen much on, on, on the news around um, those examples. Uh, for us in Northern Ireland, it, it, um, it does add a new way for companies here to deal with the issue of moving goods at risk. And this is another route for our companies to avoid tariffs on, on GB purchases, but only if their suppliers in GB are able to meet the requirements around uh, rules of origin. And as I as sort of hinted earlier, this will be new to a lot of companies in GB um, where we, we, we already had some concerns about how, how well and prepared they were and how ready they were for, for, for this new era. One area I want to touch on around the TCA rules of origin are, are the terms on bilateral accumulation. Uh, and uh, without going into detail as to what exactly those rules are, we see that there's likely to be significant impacts on GB as a supply chain or distribution hub. Um, and there are a, a number of examples in a number of areas where, where, where GB acts as a, as a as a distribution hub for both the EU markets, but also often on a on a, a GB in Ireland basis. And these things aren't uncommon. Bringing finished goods into a GB hub and then distributing them around shops, stores, or customers around the UK and Ireland, 
or even the EU, the, the trade and cooperation agreement doesn't really support that supply chain model for distributing finished goods. And that's potentially quite impactful. Moving on to another part of the TCA and services, and our trade and services, services with the EU, including Ireland, are now going to be underpinned by the terms of the TCA. And with the UK seeking a Canada-style deal, the level of access and services is never going to match that of the, the single market. But in comparison to many other EU free trade agreements, there, there is materially better access for services. That said, you know, services is a complicated area and there are a number of exemptions or exceptions and there are a, a number of requirements uh, to do things at a member state by member state level, which complicates the picture. So Northern Ireland businesses will need to consider how the rules and exporting services to the EU have changed and they may well need to undertake steps to ensure uh, recognition of professional qualifications continue in, in, in various um, me member states if they, they, they um, wish to access certain services markets on certain uh, basis. Um, moving on, to, um, I suppose, one of the hot topics of, of, of January has been uh, living under the new arrangements. And at our last session in, in, in late November, I think we, 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 we signaled that January might well be a, a difficult month for many businesses, uh, both here in Northern Ireland, and uh, it looked like it was going to be a big learning curve for many of their suppliers in GB. And I think there's lots of there's lots of examples of those difficulties. Um, you'll be as aware of them as as I am. Um, albeit, it's probably also fair to say that as January has moved on, um, familiarity seems to have got uh, better with with the new system. The more seems to be moving. Albeit, some of this is likely to be moving with the benefit of grace periods and various temporary fixes that have been put in along the way. Um, again, since we spoke last time and over the course of January as well, there's been a significant focus on on some parts of the arrangements which we know there are sort of gaps have emerged, whether that be second-hand cars, parcels, steel, access via Dublin, groupage. Um, and as these gaps have come to the fore, there's generally been some sort of action by the UK government or others to to, to tackle the issue often on a, on, on, on a temporary basis. Touching on one of those areas, parcels, um, this is some, an area where we, we do see, continue to see issues for businesses and customers, uh, depending on the, the product itself, where it's been bought from and where it originally came from. Um, again, just to, to note for on this, e-commerce element, this is not just um, um, sort of end consumers, but also um, uh, often sm quite small businesses rely on parcel operators um, and that, 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 that business model. Uh, and as we know at the, at the minute, the, this is an area where there's one of those temporary grace periods um, and we don't know yet what will, what, what, what will follow. Um, given time, I'll wrap up uh, having started on tariffs, I'll also finish on tariffs. And um, following the, the, the trade and cooperation agreement, aside from the steel issue, tariffs have not really generally come to the fore in, in terms of stories and, and media attention. Um, one reason we think that is the case is that uh, a lot of businesses are using T TSS, uh, Trader Support Service, and that's actually a two-stage process in terms of declarations. Um, lots and lots of businesses will now have used uh, TSS to move goods from GB. But at this stage, they don't actually need to complete their supplementary declarations. And that is the point in time when the tariff question has to be dealt with. Um, the TSS process for that second stage um, and supplementary declarations doesn't occur until mid, late, uh, mid to late February. And at that stage, businesses that have bought and brought goods from GB 
with their initial declaration, they'll have to start to work on the supplementary de declaration and they'll need to know how they're going to deal with any tariff issues at that stage. Um, so ideally, they'll, they'll have thought about um, the goods they bought. Are they you know, zero tariff, no matter what the origin? Um, is the business within the UK trader scheme and have they the scopes to scope to declare them those goods not at risk? Um, do they know if their suppliers can give them rules of origin certificates for the for the goods that have been bought? Or do they intend to, for example, claim a waiver? So for businesses in Northern Ireland, the issue of dealing with tariffs is just around the corner. There's a mixture of ways they could do that and potentially deal with the tariffs, but that requires them to do a bit of preparation now so they can handle the second stage and not incur any expected tariff liabilities. So um, we encourage businesses to do their homework and be ready in this. Um, just doing what you've done before beyond uh, not doing really anything beyond joining up TSS and doing the initial declarations uh, just to get the goods across and into your into your business. You know, if that's all you do, you could be in for a bit of a surprise. So best get prepared for the second stage and uh, the, trade, uh, the TSS are offering training courses on, on this topic and we encourage businesses to take those up and get prepared and avoid those tariffs. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Shane. Um, and just this was a, a few questions um, initially in relation to how things are, have, as you've said yourself, unfolded over January as, as people have become more familiar with um, dealing with the, the new um, situation. So I suppose we have seen some of the issues that have been raised along the way um, have been resolved to an extent or that, that um, fi fixes have been put in place um, while they're being resolved in relation to the steel issue and, um, and parcels and some other things. Um, just I suppose, how has that process been going from a, a departmental level in terms of those issues being identified and then conversations that need to be had at a British government and the EU level in terms of things being resolved? Have there now been, I suppose, protocols or um, procedures developed in relation to that? Um, I, I, I suppose the, the, the experience to date is one where, um, in some cases, um, you know, a number of these issues were were on were on our radar, um, but it's um, the the traction to deal with them tends to come when um, and these issues become more of a reality, um, and it's uh, it's 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 more obvious to all that they they they, they are issues as opposed to um, speculation. Um, you know, obviously, these are things um, which, in the main, this department can't fix. Um, you know, we don't run the custom system. Um, we don't run the SPSS system. Um, the issues around readiness of GB um, uh, suppliers, uh, we don't really have access to, to, to those folks to uh, where within our sort of jurisdiction or within our reach. Um, so uh, on, I suppose for us, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, um, our scope to take direct action on this is is, is pretty limited, and is one where we, you know, where we we, we do endeavour to, to to raise these issues through the 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 challenges that we have through the executive office and to uh, their counterparts and 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 and, and cabinet office. Um, that's the, that's the route we use. Um, but obviously, there's you know, um, it, it is always easier. And it's easier to get traction on raising these issues um, once um, they are no longer a th theoretical issue in a DFE paper and a, a, an issue in reality. The 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 the, the, the scope to um, you know there see some results. Um, you know there tends to improve quite a bit. I don't know if Julia or Ryan wants to add anything on that. Um, well, just to say that we do have pretty good relationships into HMRC and TSS for um, escalating kind of uh, 
um, non you know, people moving goods in a way that, you know, perhaps the standard process wouldn't, wouldn't suit or kind of, um, I remember one of the early issues was, um, home removals. Um, so there wasn't a particular process for that. So we do have a good way of kind of escalating those, but I suppose it's not unexpected that the system kind of implemented so quickly mightn't take account of every type of movement that a business could be making. So, um, it's very important to have those links in to flag the real world issues kind of businesses are facing. No, that, that's useful to know that those relationships are there and that there is, I suppose, a pathway to, to highlight and things as, as they develop. Um, and I suppose just in relation to um, what you have described there, Shane, in relation to the, the two-stage process for declaration, um, how aware do you think businesses are in relation to that? And are there penalties um, if these things aren't completed come the middle of February? Um, I, I, well, I suppose one of the reasons um, that, I, that I gave it a particular mention today at the committee was that we um, we are worried. Um, you know, we, we have seen preparations have been low. Um, and if preparations have been low for some of the um, initial actions to get goods across, um, we would also then uh, know there feel it, it, it reasonable to be also concerned that um, 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 you know there some traders will have deferred the evil day to 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 do their homework and their preparation around um, um, further declarations uh, linked to this as well, which is a point I mentioned earlier, was about um, TCA and rules of origin which uh, potentially requires action on, on suppliers over in GB to understand the origin of their goods and uh, been able to um, prove that through uh, uh, rules of origin certificates, which you know, there, if they have, could be used by their uh, counterparts in Northern Ireland uh, to, to, to access tariff-free um, goods. As, as we said earlier, the, the, the the GB side has been one where um, we, we have seen a, a, a lot of readiness issues. And so readiness issues on GB suppliers also impacts on, 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 on the scope to deal with tariffs for our companies in Northern Ireland as well. So um, there are, as I say, um, uh, training materials in this. Um, the TSS are running um, courses and webinars on the supplementary declarations they are promoting to the um, the members of the service that um, these resources are there and they they, they are certainly uh, you know, encouraging their, their their members of the service to to take up the training so they are prepared for the the second stage uh, towards the end of this month I don't know if Julia wants to say anything more on this particular topic. Um, well, I suppose it's just to say that some of the businesses who kind of get in touch are very worried about supplementary declarations and about the rules of origin of the goods they're buying. You know, um, a lot of a lot of the goods people routinely buy from GB aren't made in GB or, you know, they're made in China or <laughs> the Far East, maybe. Um, and so businesses who are switched on to this are very worried. It makes me concerned that um, there are perhaps a large number of businesses who haven't considered um, how impacted they could be. And that's a worry, particularly when you see, I think I, we understand there's relatively low levels of registration for the UK trader scheme. If you're not registered for the trader scheme, then clearly you need, a, you need to understand other processes for dealing with tariffs. Okay, thanks for that. And I suppose just in, in picking up on that then, um, what is being done to, to communicate with businesses um, to try and accre increase awareness? Um, and in particular, uh, at that, um, I suppose, British government level, how has there been communication with the, the services in Britain to ensure that those businesses are more aware of the processes and, and the need is supposed to be providing those rules of origin certificates to, to businesses here um, to, to, you know, to allow that process to happen? 
certainly, w w we understand that um, the UK government have uh, taken action to in, in, in endeavour to get the message out to, 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 to businesses on the GB side. Um, obviously, um, uh, they're also messaging for businesses uh, on the GB side in relation to uh, trade with the EU and there's obviously been lots of um, indications of um, there are steep learning curves on, on, on that angle as well. Um, so uh, we, we, you know, we, we certainly hear back uh, from um, from UK government that um, they, they have taken action through TSS and HMRC to, to, to endeavour to um, to get their, um, the, the sort of their side of the the, the, the equation better better prepared, and um, again we ha we have given the of um, any of the firms that are experiencing difficulties over here that we can pass on the details of their GB suppliers to allow um, HMRC to you know or or TSS. To give to give those folks over in GB some targeted help around um, you know, they're speeding up that learning curve. Okay, no thanks for that. Um, and I suppose just then in relation to the the grace periods, um, how is it, how is the work progressing in relation to um, the the resolving of those issues before the the end of March and the end of June, um, respectively. Um, the, the 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 grace periods uh, that you 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 seem to be pointing to are the um, uh, the ones around the the, the supermarkets and um, export health certificates and um, the, the 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 prohibitions and restrictions. Those those fall very much within the sort of dearer portfolio, um, and um, those are very much uh, sort of uh, dearer DAFRA and uh, EU issues. So th those are ones we, we, we'd probably defer to, uh, to, to, to DERA as the, as, as the folks that A are the, 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 the policy experts in this area and B are probably much more in the tent on this than, than we are. Unless Julia can um, offer any additional insight, I think that's probably as much of an update as we can give on that. Okay, thanks for that. Um, and obviously, it's just seen overnight the the issues with Larne and Belfast Port. Um, how, is there any, I suppose, um, readout yet in terms of what the implications of that will be for for businesses in terms of getting goods through? Uh, at this at this, at this stage, you know, um, you know, again, I watched the news last night, as I suspect a lot of us did. Um, uh, at this stage, I don't have any particular readouts of, um, you know, there any impacts you know, on the sort of economic or business side of the the the, the recent events and the increased tensions. Um, so, uh, I'm afraid I, I don't have any, um, you know, there new uh, insights or angles on on that particular uh, concerning story of yesterday. Okay, thank you. Um, John Stewart, can we bring John Stewart into the spotlight, please? John, you're muted. How's that? Is that okay? Yep. yep. Yeah, thanks, folks, for your presentation so far. Just a couple of quick questions because I know we're against the clock here. Um, the chair touched on sort of what advice and stuff has been given to businesses, and, and as a constituency MLA, I'm sure everyone around the table is getting the same queries. And a lot of people are just really struggling to know where to go to get the assistance. Um, I'm just wondering, is there anything set up in the department um, in terms of trying to help people steer the, the passage through this? Um, that's the first one. Um. Uh, one of our main routes is uh, NI Business Info, and uh, you know, there prior to Christmas we had the, 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 the ten key steps to take to to, to pre prepare your business. Um, many of those uh, steps take you to to, to TSS, um, because ultimately um, the new steps involve um, um, 
custom customs type actions and uh, for a certain subset of businesses also uh, actions around um, um, SPS, 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 sorry. And uh, yeah. um, uh, in, in, in addition to that, it's, it's fair to say that uh, Julia and her team have been fielding on lots and lots of individual queries uh, from businesses that have found their way to the department department um, and uh, you know, have helped re re redirect those. I think she gave the example about some areas where um, there weren't policies, there were, there were, there were gaps and things like um, um, people moving their, their own equipment around the UK, people doing things like moving house and having a lorry full of their own possessions. Um, so uh, there are lots of individual issues that uh, we can help deal with. Um, uh, other things uh, on our, uh, you know, when they go into the space of customs and SPSS, or, uh, we, we can help point and redirect them to, to, to the places that can potentially uh, help them out. I don't know if Julia wants to add anything. Uh, yeah, um, let's just to say that I have noticed a change in terms of before Christmas, we were getting a lot of queries that were much more general, whereas at the moment we see a lot of queries that are really specific to the business in question and the product in question. And and so kind of responding to that, Invest are, have now weekly advice clinics where people can book to get specific advice for their business because we do recognize that some of the more general advice, well, even when we've done, say, webinars on at risk or, uh, you know, earlier in the month, um, you do find the questions you get are, I bring in this product, this commodity code, what does that mean for me? And that's very hard to deal with in a, you know, webinar with a few hundred companies, whereas um, it's that specific advice that's direct to the company, I think, that is probably most important at the moment. And that's why kind of invest have started those weekly webinars that are open to anyone. We can share the details of those if that would be helpful. And um yeah, no that would that would be helpful. Um thanks for that. I, I just as you say, Julia, there are so many issues and so many complexities to these for so many individual businesses. And my fear, given what you're saying and given what we're hearing, it's only going to get worse before it gets better in terms of finding solutions. Is, is there anybody logging all these and actually passing them on to the powers that be so that down the line we can find derogations and, 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 uh, and try to overcome some of the major hurdles? Because... Okay, and businesses are coming to me, and I haven't got a clue about some of this stuff. I, I genuinely don't, and I don't know where to send them. And they go, they're going to spin send from pillar to post, and I think they just want to know that at least it's being logged, and at least it's been fed into a process to try and find a solution, because otherwise it's just a dead end, and that's what they're finding frustrating. Is there any idea about setting up a one-stop shop to at least log it, even if they can't get a solution on the day? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Shane, did you want to? <laughs> I, I, I was just going to say um, uh, the feedback we get from UK government, from HMRC and from TSS is um, um, they find it difficult to deal with issues that are raised in, in sort of generalities. So um, what they want is specifics. If they have, uh, if they have a company, if you have a company that's got a problem with a particular product from a particular supplier, if they've run into some problems on the TSS system, specifics, uh, so names of companies, um, uh, reference numbers for um, the, the TSS system, all those details, if uh, uh, you know the, if those companies have those, should you know they they can talk to TSS, and that's the best way to get it resolved. Uh, certainly, the folks in, in in GB find it difficult to 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 deal with problems which are discussed in generalities, uh, but give them specifics with specific issues with specific companies moving specific products or with with specific movement reference numbers or whatever. You have a much much higher chance of getting something dealt with quickly. Okay. Um, just one final one from me then, Chair. Um, just around, keen to get your understanding of the legal status of EU supervision for businesses, um, especially business regulation, in particular around state aid and digital advocacy or, um, or adequacy. Have you any idea on that in terms of the role of the ECJ within that? 
Um, in terms of data adequacy, we're we're currently operating under a um, a, a temporary arrangement, which can run for up to um, four to six months, while um, the the that what what is a technical process as opposed to a negotiation um, on on data adequacy is is, is concluded with the e, EU Commission. Um, uh, so at the minute, uh, we haven't seen what the decision is, and uh, um, I don't know if Ryan will come in in a minute and 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 discuss if he knows whether there's any um, EC uh, European European Court angle to that. Um, the, the the second point you you mentioned of I forgot to jot it down. Um, is in terms of state aid, um, that um, we're we're now uh, pretty much in a, 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 a in, in a dual system, um, where by and large, um, 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 unless I suppose agreed or. Um, in some way um, negotiated otherwise um, under the protocol uh, is very much trade and goods so that brings you into the the, the realms of estate aid i suppose largely for manufacturing companies um, and uh, but um, services aren't generally covered uh, by the protocol and in, in, in simple terms which takes you into the area of the trade and cooperation agreement now as yet um, the UK government uh, does not have a, a, a new state aid policy to replace uh, ex existing policies, um, and uh, we think it, it will be uh, taken action on that reasonably soon. Uh, those are, there's all there's every indication that they are. Um, the the trade and cooperation agreement agreement obviously has 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 chapters on subsidy control, but I suppose. Um, those are um, international commitments that the UK has on any future subsidy regime. Um, whether they will sort of choose to use only some or all of that mm -hmm. flexibility and room to manoeuvre, you know, at this stage, um, no, there I can't say for sure whether the new regime will you know, will 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 use all of that flexibility. I think in the past. Um, when within the EU, the UK was one of the advocates for for uh, controls and state aid. Um, so whether that will you know there that uh, sentiment will continue in the future or not, uh, obviously I don't know. Okay, Thank thanks for that, Jim. I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks, Chair. John O'Dowd, can we bring John O'Dowd into the spotlight, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you for the presentation and uh, answers thus far. Uh, well, clearly, uh, Brexit and the resulting protocol have caused difficulties for businesses. Um, there are businesses who are looking as to how they uh, create opportunities uh, by, by trading in a, the single European market for goods on this island or in this part of the island. So what support and advice is the department giving or producing for businesses who want to create opportunities, who want to create jobs, uh, and new markets or, or expand existing markets as a result of that. And in terms of uh, resourcing re and looking for new sources of materials and goods, uh, particularly on a north-south basis, uh, what advice and support is depart the department giving, and particularly in relation to Intertrade Ireland? Um, okay. First of all, um, clearly the, the there is a very particular outcome and arrangement for Northern Ireland following um, the, the the process of EU exit, and um, uh, it's uh, with the UK exiting the EU, there has been an element of um, everyone everyone's market access deteriorating in some way. Um, and uh, for most of uh, GB and the, and the rest of Europe, that access, I suppose, has been two steps backwards, where our access has been one step backwards, um, in that we now are pretty much the only place in Europe that has um, access to, to, to sell into GB. 
and uh, access uh, to sell into the uh, EU single market of, of, of goods. And that is, that is a, uh, no, there, a shift in the relative advantage compared to uh, um, before January. Um, so th those uh, offer our companies um, scope for you know, additional trade advantages. Um, so that can lead to uh, advantages on, in terms of supplying into, for example, GB, where um, that may not be a, a, as, as attractive to suppliers from, from the EU, and indeed the reverse, where um, historically GB may have supplied into the Republic of Ireland or other parts of the EU. Uh, our companies have a potential advantage uh, in, in that regard now. Um, going uh, forward, um, uh, um, there is a you no. Know, there there are potential uh, that translates into a potential um, um, ad advantage in terms of FDI attractiveness. Now there are lots of things in the mix when 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 a company decides to to locate in one jurisdiction or another, and this would add a, a new string to the bow, uh, whereas I suppose others have have lost a string to their bow. Uh, in, in, in GB and in and and in Europe, um, but those are those are slower burn, and those will take time to 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 build up. Uh, those are things that we are doing some some research and work on to to best understand um, wh where which 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 sectors and which investors from which countries might be best placed uh, to take advantage of this, and so uh, uh, which. No, I, I know there. Are which which countries we should be putting? You know there are 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 client executives from Invest and I. You know, which planes we should be putting on them on to sell these advantages around the world? Uh, to which types of companies operate in which types of sectors? So that's that's work we're doing. Um, um, some of that will probably be. Um, um, sensitive, uh, given that you, you won't want to be advertising which companies and which parts of the world and, and which sectors you'll, you'll be going after. Um, I don't know if Julia wants to uh, to talk an, uh, more anything on the on the supply chain side. The supply chain side is a is 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 both um, an issue to be dealt with, but also uh, you know, there are opportunities as well. Um, there are opportunities for import substitution here. Um, I suppose um, if one thing um, we have seen um, on the uh, sort of coronavirus side is that you know, we have seen companies repurpose and move from producing one type of good to producing another type of good. And uh, as the terms of trade have 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 changed, there are, you know, there is now scope for import substitution, whether that be in, in GB, Republic of Ireland, and, and other parts of the EU, uh, for our companies to look at what sort of goods they they, they produce, and whether um, there are opportunities because of um, barriers that weren't there before for GB in the EU, for them to uh, produce some you know other products. Uh, which you know, there would not be um, you know, a, a huge leap for them to, 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 to move into the field of. So that does, those advantages do, uh, are, 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 are there if um, the markets are there and our capabilities are, 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 are in that area. I don't know if Julia wants to add anything. Um, yeah, it was just to say that... Um... So you asked specifically around intertrade. So intertrade are developing a new supply chain tool that should be useful in this space in terms of disruption to, you know, to supply chains that has happened between COVID and EU exit. Um, the other important thing I think in all the chain described is the the importance of firms having kind of um, the best inputs they have they can have and no disruption in that regard. So. Um, in the last month, I suppose, we have a lot of questions from people who, you know, they may export and they may see opportunities there, but equally at the moment, their inputs are coming from GB or, you know, there's a lot of things for them to sort out um, in tandem, I suppose, with trying to take advantage of opportunities. Okay, Trevor, just see, 
I, I think there, there, there is a danger, and not necessarily from the officials' point of view, but from a political point of view, that we spend a lot of time, or some people spend a lot of time looking at the closed doors rather than looking at the open doors and seeing what opportunities there are here for businesses uh, to create employment, to create uh, a, a new sector, to create uh, a very vibrant uh, economy uh, moving forward. And can I just maybe just say in terms of shame, uh, I accept that there's a need for foreign direct investment, uh, but there are businesses here now who I think, in fact, I know, are looking at opportunities in relation to uh, being in the single European market for goods. So there's also a notice saying on Invest ANI to support indigenous businesses, businesses that are here, have a footprint here, uh, to um, create new opportunities, new businesses and new jobs. Okay. Thanks, John. Um, can I bring in Sinead, please? Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for your presentation so far. Um, I suppose this one is probably um, more directed towards Shane. Um, Shane, there's currently no overarching body really providing an oversight of the relationship between um, the, the, the TCA and the, the Northern Ireland Protocol. And I think that that's a major challenge for us. Uh, and we've seen how it imploded, really, uh, by the decision-making process of the European Commission on, on Friday evening. And there was really a scramble um, by, by, by Ireland uh, and by the UK in order to, to try and resolve the situation because there's no actual proper structures in place in order for those conversations and decision-making process uh, to take place. Uh, and, and I mean, it was a, a, a mistake um, by the EU. It was fixed relatively quickly, but sh it should never have happened. Uh, and there's a lot of anger around that. And I, I'm just wondering within the context of your department, because it's, it, it's very relevant to the Department of, for the Economy that we have uh, a mechanism uh, and a structure in place that we can engage with the TCA and the protocol. Uh, and I, I am very well aware of the joint committee and the joint uh, working group, but I'm not really aware of how uh, representatives from Northern Ireland actually has a voice in any of that. Uh, and, and, and as far as um, your department is concerned, the EU exit department, surely you need a direct conduit in order for you to be able to do your work adequately and, and raise some of the issues, overcome some of the issues that, that they're experiencing. And it just seems to be, even through the conversation today, a, a, a wee bit hit and miss um, on whether we can resolve some of these issues. Um, you know, I suppose um, indicating and giving people directions to a 10 point plan uh, and NI, um, NI information direct and NI direct and, that, and all of that, it's really not adequate. And I think one of the, the main problems that we ever experience at the minute is um, our business from east to west. And how do we resolve that? Because basically we're looking to the UK government to step up and support businesses that are actually trading into Northern Ireland. And there seems to be um, an over-concentration of, of supporting businesses into the EU, um, uh, so fr from UK into the EU rather than the other way. And this is where our business is getting into an absolute mess. Is there any way your department is working on that communication and structure uh, and um, seeking, seeking clearance and advice on it? Um, there's quite a lot in that, and I'll tackle it the 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 the, the best to can. Um, um, ultimately, these arrangements, which come about through the withdrawal agreement and the trade and cooperation agreement, these are both UK negotiated agreements or treaties. Um, um, they obviously brought around very, very significant changes and 
uh, combined with the 11th hour nature of this, um, there was an awful lot to, to, to adjust to in a, in a very short period of time, which obviously has shown up in terms of lots of individual difficulties out there. Um, but these are, are potentially, they're, they're, these are very much in the space of political or even diplomatic issues for UK government. And um, these are these are not things where um, they have built in mechanisms for um, a department like ours. Um, um, so uh, we do not have um, direct representation um, in, 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 in these arrangements by and large. And so um, we have to use the mechanisms um, that are available through normal channels of government or where um, we, we do have representation uh, via the executive and, for example, um, the, the, the joint committee. So we, we do have to use these routes. And yes, those routes are not one where we, no, the, the, the department can take direct action to, to, to solve things. Um, that's simply a, a, a reality of where we are at, 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 at the moment. Um, on on GB readiness, again, that is a, a, an area which is, is beyond our reach. You know, um, in terms of readiness of Northern Ireland companies, we are taking action, we have taken action, but that action doesn't reach into GB. And that's very much in the jurisdiction of UK government, HMRC, Bayes, and, 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 and so forth. Um, ultimately, they will have better information than us, albeit, quite frankly, I, I, I don't think that uh, we can step outside our, 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 our jurisdiction and start dealing direct with, 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 with businesses in, in GB. That's you know, very much um, uh, Westminster space. I, I appreciate all of that, and I suppose maybe um, when I say your department, I, I obviously your department is headed up by the minister, uh, and obviously these are political representations that need to take place, uh, and I can understand that that it's not uh, within the remit of uh, public servants. Um, however, I, I do believe that um, our minister and the executive office need to be the conduits for some of these difficulties uh, uh, in order to overcome them. And if we don't have any um, mechanism in order to support even um, GB businesses to actually continue uh, to trade with Northern Ireland businesses, then we're going to be really in trouble. Um, because if the UK government or uh, UK TI are not doing it, um, um, then we are going to have difficulties where, where suppliers are um, choosing not to uh, to supply into the Northern Ireland uh, marketplace, uh, and that is a difficulty. So there has to be some kind of workaround, uh, working groups within various departments um, between uh, Northern Ireland and uh, UK in order uh, to to or GB in order to overcome some of these difficulties. Uh, and we have seen that when there is work done together, um, that that we can overcome. Them. For example, the steel issue uh, that was raised. But as I say. It seems to be all very piecemeal, and I understand that it is evolving. Issues are evolving um, uh, quite, quite well, well, quite slowly. But we can see the issue regarding plants as well and seeds uh, and all of that. And you know, some of the issues may be easily resolved. Uh, others may not be quite um, as easy to resolve, but uh, is there a process within your department where you are being proactive and looking for the obstacles and, and trying to overcome them before people actually reach them? Uh, and, 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 you know, uh, for example, if we take the, the, the issue of plants, um, you know, what's your department? doing when you get uh, a problem like that? What, what's the process within your department uh, to, to, to uh, see if you can uh, sort things like that out? Okay, in, in relation to plants, um, that's actually a, a, a dear adefra uh, problem uh, in that it's, it's, in that, it's in that space of uh, Julia can, can, 
can correct me, it, but it's in, in, in the space of um, um, uh, prohibitions and restrictions, I think, uh, off, off the top of my head, and uh, um, that's very much in the in the DERA space. Um, um, w a number of the issues that we are, have been talking about over January, these are issues that we um, have put on the table and did put in the table prior to um, prior to the, the, the 1st of January. Um, um, steel was on a radar before it occurred and popped up as an issue. Uh, parcels was on a radar uh, before it popped up as a, 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 an issue. Today we talked about um, tariffs not really uh, attracting much attention, but we think that's an issue um, that's just around the corner. So, uh, no, in, well, in many cases, and uh, I think it's you know these are things um, which ha have been you know, there that have been capable of being in the means um, uh, sort of picked out with a bit of foresight. Um, many of the issues that we have seen are, haven't been terribly surprising to us because. You know, there there are these are things that w w we did see coming down the track, um, due to a the the the, the nature of the arrangements and b um, the speed at which uh, or the eleventh hour nature of putting a lot of this in 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 in, in place. So um, you know, while the issues may pop up in the news and seem like um, um, they have come out of the blue, a number of these. Quite frankly, um, we were expecting, um, and uh, once they occurred, as, a, as a, that did help uh, us raise the issue through the channels that are available to us. Julia, do you uh, uh, on on sort of plants and so forth? Uh, that's very much uh, on the, on the deer side, isn't it? Yes. No, that's right. Um, so we try and kind of leave the issues to those um, who are best placed to deal with them on that front because the uh, phytosanitary, phytosanitary stuff is so complicated. Um, yeah, it's, as you say, we try and resolve these issues as they come up. We try and anticipate things, you know, when people do bring up issues. Um, thinking of something that happened last week, like we do try and identify what will be a systematic issue, you know, that this business is, it's happening to them now, but, you know, there are an awful lot of other businesses in that sector who probably just haven't hit that yet. So what do we need to do? So we do try and look ahead in that way, but um, it's a very complicated map of things that has all been implemented very quickly. Um, and there are bound to be issues and we just, need to try and resolve them as quickly as we can for business. Yeah, and, and you have attended um, our committee meetings on, on numerous occasions and you have raised uh, the potential of all of these issues that we are now experiencing. And I suppose some others might have called it fake news at the time. It's not so fake now. It's the reality of Brexit, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, as uh, as John Lloyd said earlier, you know, we are, Northern Ireland is that we have access to two markets, uh, the UK market and the EU market. Uh, and out of a very bad story, all of it, um, we have to see what opportunities that we can uh, get from that. And I think that that's the work of the committee uh, in the months ahead. Thanks, Junaid. Um, and I know that the officials need to leave. So um, if we leave it there um, for now, and thanks very much, Jean, and I'm sure we'll, we'll get updates from you again soon. So thank you. Um, so moving thank on you. then to item number three, there has been no any other business um, indicated. Um, so item number four then is the date, time and place of our next meeting, which is tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. in this room. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly.